<laughs> Unbelievable, man. So Thank you very much. All the way from Hungary, Mr. Adam Marco. Hi, everyone. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Huge honor and pleasure. Yeah, now that was from your band Special Providence. Yeah. What song is that? It's called Northern Light, and this is my, one of my favorites from the new album. It came out in 2015. So, yeah. I'll let you catch your breath. I'll introduce him. If you guys don't know him already, he's uh, obviously the drummer from Special Providence. He's from Hungary, very big name out in Europe. Uh, you might not have heard of him in North America, but that's what we're trying to do, trying to expose greats like this to everyone in the drumming community. Um, you also are a great clinician, session drummer. You do, a lot, you do a lot of stuff out there. Yeah, I do pop, rock, metal things. And uh, yeah, it's great to play a lot of kind of music. So, you know, Absolutely. It keeps man. you in progress. And you got a unique setup here, left handed setup, but you play open style. Right? Yeah, I know it's quite confusing, uh, but it's very simple. Imagine the righty kit mm -hmm. and you play open handed. I do it, I do the same on the lefty. So There you go. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, huge, actually, huge thanks to the sponsors helping bring you out here. Minel, of course, Evans, Vic Firth Sticks as well. And uh, you have some giveaways that you're going to be doing. Uh, what we're going to do for that, same as usual, once this, hit, yeah, YouTube, like, once this lesson hits YouTube, we're going to just ask you guys to just leave a comment below. Just say what it is that you liked about the lesson. We're going to give 30 days from the day that we post the lesson. And once those 30 days are up, we're going to choose three lucky winners. And we are going to give away a pair of Adam Marco signature sticks by Vic Firth. These are uh, 5B Vic Grip. Vic Firth sticks. Yep. Very cool. Um, so you get a signed uh, pair of sticks from uh, Adam. You're also, we're going to give away one of your special Providence albums yep. called, what is this, Essence of Change. Amazing. Yeah. This is your new album? Yeah, this is the latest. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, we're going to give away one of these. Also, you're going to get a digital pack from your latest album, which includes drumless versions of all the songs. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just released a three pack of songs, uh, drum, drum playthroughs. With the originals as one, well. you can find it on the Bandcamp, specialprovidence.bandcamp, and uh, with all the all the other albums as well. Very cool. So once this YouTube or lesson hits YouTube, sorry, uh, just put a comment below with what you liked about the lesson, and we'll choose three winners for one of those three prizes and get you hooked up. And if you guys want to follow Adam online, you can check him out at adammarco.com. You can find him on Facebook, which is at adammarco1982, Instagram at adammarcodrum, and Twitter at adammarco. 82. Did I get those right? Awesome. Perfect. And check out his band too, Special Providence. You can find them on Basecamp. They have a website. They're all on social media as well and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a really good lesson. Um, if you guys like what we're doing here, make sure you check us out on Drumeo Edge. We do stuff like this all the time. We're going to be filming a special <coughs> course, actually two courses from Adam that are going to be exclusive to Edge members only. Um, so there's going to be a lot of cool stuff there. But enough of me talking, man. Let, let's get to the lesson. Uh, it's Drummer's Tools to Enhance Musicality. Adam, what does that even mean? Yeah, the lesson is basically about uh, musical rhythmical tools on the drum kit uh, to enhance musicality, to support, serve the music better. Okay. Uh, we drummers got a very nice but huge responsibility in, in shaping and forming the music. Besides that we are the, the engine of the band and we should be precise and solid, but we should be also able to direct and initiate changes in music. Mm -hmm. As a musician, I think it's essential to, to support, serve the music and to help it evolve. And being able to, you know, subserve the, the progress of different musical ideas, feels, levels within a song and uh, enhance them if it's necessary. So ba basically, we need to have certain tools on the kit, uh, which we can use consciously to, to generate changes, to being able to increase, decrease the tension in, in certain musical situations and also to react, follow the music proper, properly. So uh, I think, I guess this, these features are really, uh, could make us better musicians and better, better team players, because this is basically our role as drummers. Yeah. You know, so today, basically, I brought a, a few really basic ideas, uh, groove concepts, which could be help to, to color the music and uh, create excitement. Mm -hmm. For example, let's start with a simple groove. Okay. There are several ways how to, to enhance or change the pulse of the same groove with involving accents or changing the pattern on the hi-hat or on the, on the cymbals. Okay. Uh, so I've collected 12 uh, different stages, different dynamic uh, levels of the same groove, which are having totally different features and this way they could give different flavors to the groove and this way to the music as well. 
and um, yeah, we can use them and support the music better, you know. So you can use these concepts and not just obviously the examples you're giving, but take them to your kit and try them on your own. Absolutely. Piece. So these this could be like independence exercises, mm -hmm. but uh, they are more like, I mean, if we are thinking in, in musical tools on the drum kit, we cool. can we can probably we can we can demonstrate huge changes with these changes, like on if we are using different patterns. So let's get started. Uh, we're gonna have charts, guys, and so you can follow it on the display. Yeah, download the PDF. It comes with uh, everything that I'm gonna talk about. There's 18 exercises on there, so let's get going, man. Yeah, so it's gonna be chart number one. We're gonna start with the simple groove, the plain groove we're gonna work with. So let me just play you the groove. So this was the plain groove with no accents, no special phrasing. And to give more character to the groove, to make it a bit more heavy, more steady, the easiest way is to add accents on each beat, on the one, the two, and the three, four. So let's try, it's gonna be number, chart number two. Yep. Okay, let's uh, uh, step up a level. Okay. The next, next enhancement level could be putting the accents on every second eight note. It's chart number three, uh, which, makes the, which makes the groove more jumpy and kind of pushing the groove and this faded music forward. So the hi-hat pattern is gonna be one and two and three and four. So let's check it with the groove. To step up a level, uh, to give a, an extra nice flow and an extra push to the groove, it's a great way to put even accents on each eight note, which makes, makes the groove more moving, okay. gives an extra, an extra push to the musical situation as well. So even accents on each eight note. Let's try this one as well. To continue the progress, we can open the hi-hat, we can involve a um, uh, hi-hat opening into the groove. Opening the hi-hat uh, is kind of opening the soundscape of the groove and, okay. and the music as well. Yeah. Uh, it could be really useful to, for example, to indicate changes in music or, or, or you know, to prepare some musical change as well. Uh, and plus, the hi-hat opening gives a special bouncy feel to the group, so it could be really useful to increase the tension, for example. So it's gonna be number five, and the hi-hat pattern is one, two, three, four. So let's check it with the groove. Step up a level, we can involve 16th notes to the groove to make it more dense, to make it more thicker, you know, more percussive. It's a great way to, to increase the tension. So we're gonna play number six, yeah, and uh, two 16s and an and a eight note. So it looks like one. Okay, let's check it with the groove. This could be really useful, for example, to demonstrate changes in a song. Like uh, if we have a verse, bridge, and chorus part in a song, this could be really useful, for example, in a bridge part, mm -hmm. when you know preparing some change 
and could be a great lead, for example. Uh, for, for yeah, example. and you're not changing the root of the beat. The, yeah. the bass and the snare stays the yeah. same. It's just the hi-hat totally. pattern. Yeah. Totally. We, we don't need to change the, the pattern or the groove. Yeah. We're just putting this extra pausing thing, like ostinato kind of thing, into the groove, and it makes it more moving, you know. So cool. it's, it's a great tool to use. Uh, so let's go further. Number seven. And we're gonna groove with open hi-hats, which is a really powerful, uh, trashy, it's a trashy sound and really, really powerful and it's a really strong character, so it could be great support to certain musical parts. So let's check it out. I think this is one of defi well, definitely one of the highest dynamic levels on the height to groove on the height. So now let's uh, switch sides and we're gonna start grooving on the right and the, uh, as the next uh, dynamic level. Grooving on the right symbol is, uh, I think, uh, makes the overall sound of the groove and the music more thicker, more fat, and it's a great way to to support certain musical parts for sure. And it's uh, number eight. We're gonna divide eight notes between the bell and the right cymbal. So the pattern is going to be like. Right? So let's check it with the groove. Okay. Now I notice you're adding eighth notes on your hi hat foot too. That's just to keep yeah keep something there. I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it. I think it gives a special percussive feel to the groove, and uh, more importantly, I think it's keeping the band together. Yeah. Uh, the guitarist and the keyboard player. I mean, they really like to hear this constant pausing, like like a click track, you know, or something. Yeah, it could be helpful, and yeah. it's also a great exercise to kind of you know to improve our independence as well. So. Yeah, so let's step up a level and it's gonna be number uh, nine. Uh, to increase the tension, we can involve 16th notes on the right. Mm -hmm. So the pattern is going to be two 16th and a bell. Which makes it more percussive, more thicker. And uh, this inner ostinato gives a uh, a very nice, different voice to the groove, or and so it could be a great tool to to enhance musicality, basically. So let's check this out with the groove. One, two, three, four. Let's go further. One of the one of the uh, loudest and highest dynamic range to smashing on the crash and uh, it's number 10 and we're gonna use quarter notes crotchets above the groove which is a really powerful full rock on energy which could be a great support for, for some chorus parts or some riffs mm -hmm. whatever so let's try this One. Right? And if we want to go even higher, uh, we can involve another sound source like a china or a stack into the groove because I think involving sound sources, different sound sources, is always kind of help. Uh, it always helps to, to, to increase the tension course, or yeah. go upper in, a, in the dynamics. So it's going to be number 11 and we're going to divide eight notes between the china and the right cymbal. So it's going to be one and Let's check it with the groove. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so this was the highest level. And uh, in terms of energy. In terms of energy and okay. dynamics. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
Uh, and additionally, uh, as a smooth start or the lowest dynamic level, we can play the same pattern in a linear way. For those who never heard about the linear grooving, it's basically when no limbs strike the drum kit in the same time. It's a very percussive, very musical way to groove. And uh, in fact, playing the same pattern in a linear way and then then playing in a straight way could cause an immediate progress in, in, musical, in musical situations. So it's a really, really useful tool, for example. So let me play you just a linear groove. It's number 12. So we can use it as a start and then switch to the straight way. Which so you're basically just filling in yeah. everything, uh, but or everything around the bass drum and snare. Absolutely. So the pattern is totally the same. Yeah. Yeah. So now, play, uh, we gonna, I'm gonna play you the whole stuff in a sequence to showcase the sure, uh, the, sure. the differences. Before you do that, let's just kind of re recap for us the the, the difference, um, the different steps. So you have accenting on the quarters accenting on the eighth notes. Kind of just recap kind of what you did there so we can kind of listen for it when you do the whole sequence. Okay, so yeah, we can have accents on each beat mm -hmm. at first to make, to, to give more character, to make it more steady. Then the second step, we can uh, put the accents on every second eighth note, mm -hmm. which makes it a bit more jumpy. It could be a real tension maker and uh, makes it really moving forward. And then we can groove, as a next step, we can groove with even accents on, on, on each eight note on the hi-hat. And then as, as a step up, we can open the hi-hat on every second eight note, which makes it more jumpy, more bouncy, opens the soundscape. Uh, it could be really useful to prepare musical changes as well. And then we involve 16th notes mm -hmm. uh, to make it more percussive, more moving. And then we are smashing with, uh, with the constant open hi-hats, eight notes, right? And then we switch to the right symbol. First, we put all the accents on each beat on the bell. Then as a next step, we can involve the 16th and then putting the accents on every second eight note. Mm -hmm. And at the end, we can just you know, full on crash. Full on, full on rock. And then China as well. And I involving guess. another sound source could be also a nice, awesome. nice way. Yeah. So let me just play you in a sequence with a click track so you can follow and you can hear the differences and you can hear the gradual building of it. Cool. So you're going to start yeah. with number 12? Start with number yeah. 12 and then yeah. go 1 through 11? Exactly. We're going to start with the linear okay. as the lowest dynamic and then 1, 2, 3. And Love so. It. Love it. Okay.
done. Yeah. Everything built. So the cool thing about that is any groove you have, you don't have to, and I know a lot of drummers, uh, me myself when I was starting out too, I always struggle, how do I ch change a beat up for the chorus or what do I play for the chorus? A lot of times you can play the same groove. Just change up what you're doing with your right hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As you can hear, these were totally different dynamic levels, different, different impact on the actual groove and this way they could behave differently in musical uh, situation. Some of them could be challenging like we can improve our independence as well. But more importantly, we can help the, the music grow from point to point. And this is our, this is our basic role. Yeah. And, uh, and demonstrate changes between musical parts with just using with these really tiny changes. So, yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Uh, so let's, now let's go more into the progressive side of the things. So we're gonna actually, uh, using the same elements in, in odd time grooves, uh, using the same tools. It a, it's a, could be a fun with keeping the, the quarter distances uh, in, the, in the accents. Okay, so you have some, page two guys of your PDF, you have yeah. some odd time? Uh, yeah, seven, it's, gonna be, it's, a, it's gonna be an odd time groove, it's seven, eight, and we can use the same elements as an enhancement tool. Uh, it's a great way to, to, to increase the tension, makes the odd time groove more like understandable, digestible. And, this, uh, and since it's odd time signature, the accent's going to rotate in each bar, and, uh, which is a great tool. So let's, let's, uh, let's uh, do this. Uh, it's gonna be number 13, the plain groove. Let so me this just- is just the basic groove here and then you'll add- Absolutely, the just the cool. basic groove, okay. just the plain groove. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this was the, the plain groove, and now let's start to enhance it. We're gonna involve the accents, uh, number 14. Uh, yeah. As you can see, in the first bar, all the accents are go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in the second bar, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So it's gonna be like, uh, I'm gonna link it like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so let me just play the groove now. One, two, Right? Okay, yeah. Let's step up a level. Number 15, uh, we're going to open the hi-hats under, under the, the accents. We got used to the motion in the previous uh, exercise. Now, the only thing what we need to do is just opening the hi-hat, which gives a, a nice extra pulse to the groove. So it's gonna be like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right. One, two, three, four, five, six. As a next step to make it more moving, a bit more percussive, uh, number 16, we're going to add 16s before the hi-hat opening. So it's gonna be like one, Okay, let's check it with the groove. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Love that groove. Yeah. yeah, it gives a really nice extra flow to the groove and it mm. could be a great tool. Uh, to enhance uh, musical situations. So now let's switch sides. We're gonna involve another sound source. Okay. We're gonna divide eight notes between the stack and the right cymbal. So it's gonna be
And as the highest level, we can, uh, it's gonna be number 18, we can just groove with quarters, with crutches above the odd time groove, which is definitely the highest dynamic range and also, also the most adventurous one because we are uh, riding, or we are, yeah, we are riding with quarters, which means that in the first bar, all the, all the beats gonna be on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in the second bar, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which gives a really nice, massive background for, for certain musical parts. So let me just play the groove. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, and now let me play you the whole stuff in a sequence to showcase the, the differences. So 13 to 18. 13 to 18, rest. Right. Exactly. Man, good job. Yeah. yeah, and now let me let me play you just an extract from a song where I'm using the same uh, system, the same method. It's gonna be an extract from a special providence song. Uh, yeah, let's do that. What's the song called? It's called Awaiting. Awaiting. Yeah. So I heard it with the riding on the crash, riding on the china and stuff like that. You can hear that come through in that song. Yeah. Very cool, man. First I use the stack. Yeah. And then if we want to go even up or even higher, like uh, because the music needs it, we can go in the china or in the crash or stuff. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Let's get you to play us another special Providence song. Yeah, yeah. Is that cool? Um, you have one loaded up, I believe. It's called Surprise. Surprise Me. Yeah, yeah. Correct? It's also from the new album. New album. Also one of the play-along packs that is on your base camp. Um, Absolutely. Very Band cool. camp, yeah. Oh, band camp. Yeah, Sorry. man. All right. So here it is. Special or Surprise Me from Special Providence.
<laughs> Holy cow, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Adam Marco, that was awesome. Thank you very much. Lots of great comments in the chat, by the way. A lot of people are asking when you're going to come and tour North America. Got some people asking when you're doing more clinics out in Europe. Um, so I guess just follow him on social media, everyone. He's gonna. I'm sure you'll post all the information there. So. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Maybe, unfortunately, we never had the chance to to tour in the states because we haven't found the the perfect agency for that. But uh, hopefully, it's going to happen sooner or later. Absolutely. Well, you're always welcome here. If you ever come to North America, make sure you get a show in Vancouver. Yeah, man. I love, love this place. We'll have you back on Dremio. <laughs> uh, okay, let's get a couple questions. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of people um, submitting questions about um, your setup and, and why you play the way you do. So we'll get to those uh, as well. But here's one from Merkovis... Ner I'm going to pronounce it wrong, sorry. <laughs> Merkovasikia. X7. Anyway, sorry if I butchered your name, my apologies. He says, Hi Marco, I think your style is very unique and you are above all very creative musician, not only a Thank drummer. You, man. He says, can you tell us a little bit more about your writing process with the band Special Providence and harmony between the other instruments and your incredibly musical and catchy rhythms that sound very complicated and they are often either polyrhythms or odd time signatures. So maybe just speak a little bit about the writing process that yeah, you guys yeah. go through. Basically, in the band, um, my my mates, uh, the piano player Jolt Kartenecker and our guitarist Martin Curtis, they are bringing the ideas. So they, when we got to rehearse together, uh, I got, we got like the frame of the songs, like skeletons, you know, and then then we are putting it together. And uh, um, I'm I'm in charge of you know putting the drum parts together. And I'm always trying to think in, in, in the music, uh, trying to support it and uh, trying to make it like really digestible, even though it's, it's progressive music. Uh, so I think this could be the key, I mean, for any kind of music to, to, to basically to support the music. Doesn't matter if it's if progressive or not, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, to being in the music. Big time. I think yes, everything's got to everything's got to fit together. Yeah. You can't sacrifice. I know a lot of times you want to play something that might not fit because it's so cool. But yeah. You got to sometimes sacrifice that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The song, uh, Ginger V Petite says, "Hey, when did you start playing drums, Adam?" Yeah, I started uh, when I was six years old. I grew up in a musician family. Both of my parents are classical musicians, and start I started with the classical music uh, as well. And when I turned to 13 or something or 12, uh, that was the point I started to, to play on a drum kit. First, I, I, I uh, played on a right kit, mm. but I sucked big time. So my teacher told me to switch, of course, because I'm a, I'm a left-handed. And uh, when, we switched, when we switched, uh, he told me to play open-handed because this way my weaker hand you know, works works more. And I, this way I can improve my weaker hand, which is a really great thing. And very good thing to play open-handed. I can just really recommend it to ev any, everyone because this way you you can kind of develop uh, different vocabulary, like feel-wise. And yeah, yeah, you can see it in, in in your playing the stuff that you can't do if you're playing crossover, right? Or it'd be very difficult to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of open-handed, Nikolai in the chat uh, or submitted a question. Sorry, says, do you have any tips for someone who wants to start playing open-handed? Yeah. Uh, I think the best tip is just to, to start with the basics, with a totally simple groove, like like this, this groove. Just start it very simple, you know. Yeah. And and just practice, practice, practice the grooves, and I think it's uh, it's gonna help you a lot. I mean, just really start with the basics. There you go. Yeah. Uh, we actually do have a course and a lot of material on uh, inside of Drummy Edge on playing open-handed, um, so make sure you check that out. Justin Burnett says, uh, hey, this is my first live lesson and I've already learned a lot. Pretty impressed, Adam. Thank you very much, man. Well, yeah, welcome, Justin. I'm glad you're Thanks. here. That's why I'm here. Um, two questions about your snare, one from Seth C and one from Leon Burkett says, hey Adam, I love this lesson, your snare sounds really cool. What heads and dampening do you have on that snare? Because I can see you have a little yeah. drum dot or gum or something like that yeah, on there. Yeah, it's a, it's a slap cut uh, dampening and it's basically a natto snare drum, bronze snare drum, 14 by 6 half. Mm -hmm. And I'm using the Evans Onyx heads, uh, it's a really uh, amazing uh, skin, it works very well, really responsive and, uh, and definitely the bronze uh, snare and uh, 
very important that I'm using Angel Hoops. I'm endorsing Angel Hoops. It's a national uh, Hungarian uh, company, and they they make amazing hoops. It's a stainless steel hoops. It's a stainless steel hoop, mm -hmm. and it's really really off the chart, and it's really feels good. Uh, hey? Feels good, yeah. and and kind of you know vanishing all the useless overtones as well. So uh, I love it. Yeah. Very cool. It sounds great. Um, you have that dot or that uh, I guess it would be slap. Cats. Yeah, this is the yeah. about a centimeter from the edge or a couple millimeters from the edge. So yeah, hopefully that helps you guys there. Um, so here's a question from Danny B. He says, "What do you dedicate the most time when you're practicing?" Good question. Well, uh, nowadays I'm more focusing on the on the ghost notes and trying to you know uh, repair my mistakes and and. Uh, um, old time things very much and the linear playing. So you, when you say ghost notes, what kind of exercises do you do or what kind of practice do you do to work well, on I'm, ghost I'm just kind of improvising, uh, improvising grooves with ghost notes to just to strengthen my weaker hand, the right hand. And uh, so I do it like, like this way on the right with the snare and then I switch. So I should do it from both sides. Like, and to work on your yeah, dexterity. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to show us a little bit of what you would do if you were just jamming and practicing some ghosts? Well, uh, why not? Basically, I, these are just like exercises. Like, they could sound like a groove. Like. And then you switch to the other yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. That sounded awesome. Uh, we'll get a couple more questions here before we get you to play one more tune for us yep. out. Uh, here's one from Lady Sticks asks, how do you determine what symbols to get uh, or how many to use when you're playing? You got a pretty good selection of minor symbols here. Yeah. How did you choose them? What do you look for? I'm looking for the, the certain sounds. Uh, and I'm more, mostly using the dry and the dark series because in this kind of music that I play, they are. They have this really rich, nice uh, tones. One of my favorites is this tech, uh, which is a 16-inch crash combined with a Generation X uh, trash head, mm -hmm. which is a really nice trashy sound. And I, and I just came up with the idea to put these two splashes together. And this, 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 this little dude is my my favorite. Like. Yeah, it really nice awesome. sound. Yeah, 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 no doubt. Like a per, it's really percussive. Yeah, so different colors, and I'm using I'm using all of them in purpose. Like uh, you know. So, what kind of advice would you give a beginner when they're trying to find symbols for themselves? Well, um, first of all, they should know what what music they play, and they should choose uh, for the music. I mean. It's, uh, so don't go buy like a jazz no, swing no, no. set if you're going <laughs> to yeah, play yeah. rock. Exactly not. I guess so. Here's a question from R. West Hun says, why did you join a pop rock band while you have an amazing progressive band with Special Providence? What, what did, why did I? Why did you join why did you? a pop rock band? we got to work. Drummers got to work. We'll take what we can get, right? <laughs> yeah, basically, I'm, I'm, doing, <coughs> I'm doing session jobs uh, since I was 20. Okay. Yeah. And... Uh, Besides my, my, my band, Special Providence, uh, I really like to do it because it really keeps you, keeps you in progress and playing different styles of music uh, is really refreshing and, uh, and uh, could give you uh, a lot of fun and um, it makes you practice and uh, more importantly, it's great to, to be a part of different uh, projects as well. Absolutely. You know, so Absolutely. So you don't get bored. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I don't think you'd get bored of Special no, Providence. No, absolutely that, that not. music is, is amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Danny B. asks, what's the name of his band again? It's Special Providence 
You can find him online, just type in Special Providence. Find Adam Marco on adammarco.com and all of his social channels as well. You link to all that on your website too, I'm, I'm assuming. Yep. Um, so we're going to wrap the lesson up. It's getting close to that time. Again, if you guys want to win, we are going to be doing three giveaways through YouTube. And once this lesson hits YouTube, you have 30 days from the, the uh, day we post it where you just leave a comment below with what you loved about the lesson. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And we're going to be giving away a pair of signed Vic Firth sticks signature sticks from Adam Marco. And we have one of his newest CDs from Special Providence, Essence of Change. And all on top of that, we're gonna be giving away digital download pack of your three song play along pack. Yeah, man. Awesome, I got all that right? Yeah, you were amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks it's been a lot. great hanging really out with you. Um, you're an incredible drummer. I hope that uh, many more people get to see your video, this lesson, and um, become a fan of, of your drumming. Man. So you're gonna play us out with a tune. What's the tune called? Yeah, it's a special Providence medley. Okay. It's like four songs in one, and it's basic from basically from the third release. And uh, it's a great example how can we use different uh, conceptions or groove conceptions or different methods in, in the music. So love it. Yeah. All right. Well, enjoy. I'll see you guys all later. If you have any questions about this or about Dromeo, just email me davidromeo.com, and hopefully we'll see you on Dromeo again. Thanks a lot, Adam. I thank you, man. Huge yes. honor. Thank you very much. Have a good last song. Yeah. <laughs>